Hello, everybody. I, this is going to be just disjointed, I think, but we're going to run with it. So my name is Daniel Young. I'm the owner and founder of Adapted Perspective and the Ad Adapted Perspective social media platforms. And I am talking finances, but not exactly finances today. And instead of the regular financial meme, uh, which I'll admit, I mean, this is Thursday, so I, I missed my Wednesday, uh, my individual personal Wednesday deadline to post a financial meme yesterday. Uh, but I'm not talking directly finances. And it, when I find the, find the right picture, I'll, I'll post this video. But I, I just heard a song that hit a chord and it relates to something else I I heard and I saw the data for this week and it relates to my journey but it also relates to yours uh, I, I don't have a script I'm not picking apart somebody's meme today um, it's going to be uh, transparent and honest video and really rough and raw video. But th that's the best I can do. And it, it's it's one of those things where every now and then I, I get an idea that, that flits across my head, but it, it, it hits deeper and it it's just like you have to talk about this. So I am. So I saw a study earlier this week on... Uh, the the scientific evidence, but also just the the experienced outcomes of prayer, and not simple prayer, not like the stuff that might start your day or what most people start their day. Not that one minute prayer you might pray every single day that's happening, or when you're stressed out about something at work, or you're stressed out about something like a huge financial decision or or medical decision you're facing. You're facing not that random blip of a prayer. Purposeful prayer takes away your stress, but so does purposeful reading of a Bible. When I say a Bible, it could might be your Bible, it could be an online Bible. Uh, reading a Bible four days a week consistently decreases your fears, decreases your stress, gives you more wisdom, uh, gives you a better ability to process and make it through the day-to-day -day life. Purposeful prayer decreases your stress, decreases your anxiety, and the weight of those financial things that just weigh on you. I mean, the up and down market, the day-to-day -day lifestyle, the managing a budget with crazy inflation and stagflation, and now what sounds like increasing inflation, what's already been there for a while and the Fed's been hiding, uh, the troublesome labor market, and regardless of what's going on in the day-to-day -day life and the day-to-day -day economy and the stuff that just weighs down your budget and limits your ability to invest or or what you feel like the, the your inability to move forward that type of weight that just stays there is a way to combat that and in the individual weight you feel like the the wrestling with yourself or what might even feel like wrestling with God about stuff. The stuff that just lingers and doesn't feel like it gets better, that kind of stuff you can pray about, but it it's not like this lofty prayer where it's kind of like, I mean, it's not even like Billy Graham praying in his conventions. It's It's you having a conversation with God about the stuff in your life and you can say it however you want because it's your individual relationship with God and to be very transparent extremely honest and, and honestly pretty pretty vulnerable with you the place that I go to pray is a quiet it's a quiet space I can find but if I do it not right if I do it habitually in the sense that if I do it this time, every time, and I create the space, then I can take the space with me, whether I'm in a quiet space or I'm in a loud space or I'm in a car or I'm anywhere. But the what, what constructs itself best in my mind is putting myself inside uh, a lighthouse. 
And I started with a rook, like the, the castle turret you would find on any old school English castle. Dear goodness, what are with the notifications? Doesn't matter what I do, these notifications just don't go away. So hopefully they don't interrupt my video and your your hopefully they don't they don't distract you. Maybe you don't hear them at all. I, I don't know. Um it's this. The castle rook was helpful. I could envision myself inside it. But it a lighthouse is more apt because it, it's it's like a it's like a lighthouse without a roof where I can be in complete silence inside and I can envision my space, I, I can envision the ground, the interlocking stone wall, uh, the emptiness of that, so there are no distractions inside. And it's just big enough that I can put my hands out and touch the edges. And it's a space I can, con it's a space I can control. If it's a box, then there's corners that I can't reach. And it's super tall and God can pour in and anything that for whatever reason crosses into that space, I can just kick out and envision myself in complete silence and complete, like a uh, completely distraction free environment. So if God can pour in and I can kick everything out, then he can say whatever he needs to say. And there's nothing else there to distract me. And when I'm doing what I should be doing, whether I'm good at it or not, when I'm listening and he's pouring in, then I can actually reflect the light back out through the lighthouse. But when I'm not doing what I should be doing, then I'm not admitting that much light or I'm not admitting that light at all. And I, I like the metaphor. I mean, I like the nautical metaphor, but I like the metaphor of the lighthouse, but it, it works itself into that construct best in my head. And I found that the, like, think of yourself on a mountain. There's too many distractions. Think of yourself on a beach. Well, there's still way too many distractions. And you end up with this limitless, the, um, this amazing landscape. But at the same time, it's a limitless landscape and you can't control it all. And our brains are so scattered and wired and easily distracted that it, the, the beach is beautiful, but the waves are distracting and the seagulls are distracting and the pelicans are distracting and the mountain is beautiful, but the birds are distracting and the random butterflies are distracting. And I wish that that bird sounds amazing, but I almost wish it would be quiet so I could concentrate more. I needed a space where I could really isolate myself and control. And the best thing I could envision is a, is a cylinder where that's just big enough for my hands scrape the stones. And anything that comes into that space, I can immediately boot out. So I say this, and it's everything. Bells in the background, distractions on the computers. It's... If you're like me, when I, I imagine a lot of people are to a, to a degree where there are times more than others where you feel the weight of all the stress. And <laughs> this is like everything today. Like phone rings, bell rings, notification, like every single thing is being thrown in my face trying to get me to not make this video, which just tells me to keep going. So like every freaking thing you can imagine is happening right now for me to not make this video. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how else to say it. It's insanely important for you to create a space. However, that envisions inside your head a space that you can control where you can take time out of your day and pray. And you can really offload the stress of finances, but you can really offload the stress of life. And it's insanely important. And if you can do it, 
daily, like if you can truly form a habit in doing that, it really will make you feel better and it really will make it easier. And more importantly, it improves your connection with God and your relationship with God. And you see a higher purpose than your own selfish pride of life. So that's really all I got. I don't it's financial, but it's also not financial. So, um, gosh, what, whatever you're facing, pray about it. And whatever stress you're feeling off finances, pray about it. And the uncertainty of your life, pray about it. And it, it doesn't have to be lofty. It's you're just having a conversation with somebody else about how stressed out you are and you're asking for help. So, if you like the content, consider subscribing. To the, consider subscribing to my channel. Hit the like button, uh, and then you can find me on Instagram. It's the same handle on Instagram. The Facebook pages still exist, but I am working on understa understanding Instagram and that algorithm. So, uh, you're the captain of your ship. You have the power to change your life and your financial future. A lot of people are going to help you, but really, only you can make the choice to do things. So. Build the structure you need. Really pay attention to what people are telling you, what people tell you. And from my experience, pray, because it really does make a difference. So whatever you're doing, I mean, you can think about change all you want, but it's not going to happen unless you actually do something about it. So whatever you have for the week, I hope it goes well. And gosh, the really important stuff, to be honest, the really important stuff that you got to say, you're going to find at times that there is roadblock after roadblock after roadblock, and you just got to keep going. So I hope you have a great week, and I will see you all in another video. Bye-bye.